Let's talk about multiple sclerosis pseudo exacerbations. So to start with terminology, when I use terms like an MS flare, exacerbation, relapse, or attack, I'm using these terms to mean exactly the same thing, which is developing new neurological symptoms due to inflammation in the nervous system due to MS. An example would be having numbness and tingling and weakness of the legs due to inflammation in the spinal cord. So pseudo means false. So pseudo exacerbation kind of means false exacerbation. But it does not mean that the symptoms are false. The symptoms are very real and due to MS, it's just that instead of being caused by new inflammation, they're actually caused by old injury to the nervous system, but the symptoms are coming out due to some kind of external physiologic stress. I'll give you an example. Let's say you have MS and in the past you had transverse myelitis, inflammation of the spine, and you had an attack with numbness and weakness in the legs, but recovered perhaps with some residual symptoms like a little bit of numbness in the legs. But years later, you developed a bad urinary tract infection and had fevers, and you kind of felt almost like when you originally got diagnosed with MS, you had that numbness and weakness, and you were much, much worse than before. But after getting treated for the urinary tract infection with antibiotics, over time, you recovered. And maybe, let's say, you had new MRI scans, but they didn't show any new lesions, just the old lesions that you already had. This is a multiple sclerosis pseudo-exacerbation due to UTI and fever. So what exactly is happening here? Let's say you had transverse myelitis and you had this demyelinating event in the spine. You can have a lot of remyelination. However, when we do autopsy studies and we look at remyelinated lesions, we see that the myelin, the fatty coating of the nerve fibers that allows for normal transmission through the spinal cord, is abnormal. It may be thinner than normal. The nodes of Ranvier, the natural gaps between the segments of myelin may be closer together. And hence, even though it functions well, it may be more susceptible to physiologic stress. And so people with MS can have quite impressive lesions, but function normally. I have patients that have a lot of spinal cord lesions, but they can walk and even run normally because the information is getting through there. But depending on exactly what's going on at the microscopic level, they may be very sensitive to physiologic stress. And it's well known that increase in body temperature can kind of cause a decompensation so that there's essentially a short circuiting and the body is unable to get that information efficiently through the demyelinated areas. But as the fever goes away, the UTI heals, it returns to normal. So what are the causes of pseudo exacerbations? Well, infection and fever, increase in body temperature, external heat, sometimes exercise, but sometimes even things like emotional stress, sleep deprivation, or any kind of physiologic stress on the body, for instance, other illnesses, electrolyte abnormalities, basically anything that kind of makes you lousy overall is likely to worsen your symptoms of multiple sclerosis. And this can occur with any multiple sclerosis symptom. So let's say you had optic neuritis and you had pain and vision loss in one eye, but your vision got better over time, maybe in the setting of illness or on a very hot day in the middle of summer or with intense exercise, you could get a recrudescence of the blurring of the vision. But it may go away as you cool down or treat the infection. So what is the treatment of a pseudo exacerbation or pseudo attack? Well, for a typical multiple sclerosis attack, that is having new neurological symptoms due to inflammation of the nervous system, you know, we could recommend steroids. For instance, intravenous methylprednisolone, 1,000 milligrams daily for three to five days, or oral prednisone, 1,250 milligrams daily in the morning for three to five days, sometimes with a taper. But because a pseudo exacerbation isn't actually caused by new inflammation, Generally, it would not be treated with steroids. It would just be treated by treating the underlying cause. So in the setting of infection, of course, we would treat the infection or the electrolyte abnormality, we would treat that. Or if it was just due to heat, you know, we would say to cool down and it should go away. Now, of course, sometimes it could be a little bit ambiguous. So how do you know if it's an exacerbation that needs steroids or a pseudo exacerbation that needs some other treatment or even just rest and cooling down? Well, it's sometimes a little bit difficult to know, but typically a pseudo exacerbation will cause 
reappearance of old symptoms. So if you have a new symptom that you never had before, let's say you had numbness and weakness of the limbs as symptoms of MS, but you never had any visual symptoms, but you have pain and vision loss in the right eye, that's very, very unlikely to be a pseudo exacerbation. And also, sometimes people can get multiple exacerbations that cause similar symptoms. So, of course, you can get transverse myelitis multiple times. However, you know, if you have worsening of old symptoms and you're sick in some other way or there's some other obvious cause, then it's most likely a pseudo exacerbation. And it makes sense to try to address that issue first before getting evaluated. So, practically speaking, in the real world, if, there, if you have a worsening of symptoms and there's something obvious that seems to be causing it, it makes sense to address that first. But if there's no improvement after resolution of, say, the urinary tract infection, then, of course, it could be a typical attack that requires steroids. Now, one comment about steroids in general, just to take a step aside. Some people really don't like steroids. They have very severe side effects from steroids, and they want to avoid them at all costs. But some people actually get a lot of benefits from steroids because they get increased energy, and that can help with multiple sclerosis fatigue, not necessarily by reducing inflammation in the nervous system, just by kind of reducing inflammation throughout the body and giving energy and things like that. So some people receive steroids over and over again, not necessarily for a true multiple sclerosis attack. And I do think this can potentially be dangerous. And I'll give you a few examples. I've seen cases where someone has multiple sclerosis and they have a urinary tract infection and they're given steroids blindly and then they end up septic in the hospital because they have a worsening urinary tract infection that wasn't treated and in fact they received an immunosuppressant that made their UTI worse. So it's kind of important to know the difference between a pseudo exacerbation and an exacerbation. And I've seen numerous examples of this. I had one patient who received an old school treatment for multiple sclerosis of intravenous methylprednisolone 1000 milligrams once monthly. Now, although steroids have evidence for treating relapses and speeding recovery, there's really no evidence for steroids as a long term preventative treatment for multiple sclerosis. But, you know, particularly prior to the advent of disease modifying therapies, this was actually a fairly popular treatment. So I had one patient who was receiving this treatment for years and years. They loved it. They felt good. They had no side effects. But then they developed an unfortunate rare side effect of high dose steroids, which was osteonecrosis of the hip. And they unfortunately developed permanent arthritis of one of their hips. And of course, after that, they stopped the treatment. But this ended up being by far their most disabling symptom, worse than any of their symptoms of multiple sclerosis. So I would definitely give warning to receiving high dose steroids, either oral or intravenous, unless there's really a good evidence-based indication. And the reason for that is just because these are not low-dose steroids, like receiving prednisone 20 milligrams for poison ivy. You know, the equivalent dose of 1,000 milligrams of solumedrol is 1,250 milligrams of prednisone. And the probability of getting a rare but horrible side effect, such as osteonecrosis of the hip, or say a bleeding stomach ulcer, which I've also seen from high-dose steroids, is much, much, much greater. Now, in general, if you look at the old studies of steroids in multiple sclerosis relapses, such as the optic neuritis treatment trial from the 1990s, the evidence suggests that steroids speed recovery. They make people recover faster from attacks, but they don't necessarily change the long-term outcome. For instance, if you have optic neuritis, even if you don't take steroids, you're likely to get a lot of improvement over time. However, you know, obviously, if your vision is really bad, you want to get better faster, which is why you take steroids. But the point is, if it's unclear if someone's having an exacerbation versus a pseudo exacerbation, it's reasonable to wait and evaluate for other things and see what the progression is. And also, if someone has a very mild and non disabling relapse, you know, it may be reasonable to forego steroids. Of course, that's much easier for the doctor to say than for the patient to say. But if a relapse is causing significant symptoms, even if it's just numbness of the legs that maybe the doctor doesn't think is that bad, but to you is very bad, it makes sense to go ahead and take the steroid treatment. 
So, you know, obviously it can be a little bit difficult to figure out what's a relapse and what's a pseudo relapse. Now, a few other things is this phenomenon of recrudescence can actually occur with other neurological diseases. So in the hospital setting, we'll see patients that have, say, a prior stroke or who have Parkinson's disease who also worsen, who also experience this recrudescence in the setting of infection or as other physiologic stress. For instance, someone could have a stroke with right-sided weakness and they could come to the hospital for a new right-sided weakness that's worsening, but in reality, they don't have a new stroke. They actually just have a UTI or some other infection or some other medical condition. And people with Parkinson's disease or Lou Gehrig's disease or other diseases can also experience this same phenomenon. However, it's much, much more likely with multiple sclerosis and demyelinating diseases, and it's because of this phenomenon of partial remyelination leaving a nervous system that's sort of susceptible to physiologic stress. And I have patients who have had numerous pseudo-exacerbations, and unlike typical attacks caused by new inflammation, disease-modifying therapies are not going to prevent this because even though they stop inflammation, they don't regrow myelin. And so if you have this partially demyelinated spinal cord or parts of your brain, you may be very susceptible to this. And, and I have patients who have had just numerous episodes of pseudo-exacerbation. But the good news is they tend to get better just over time and with treatment of the underlying cause. Now, as in another aside, I've seen a very rare phenomenon of someone getting diagnosed after a pseudo exacerbation. Now, this is quite rare, but for example, I had one patient who developed endocarditis, infection of the heart valve, and they were very sick with high fevers. And they also had sort of generalized weakness and some other neurological symptoms. And when examining them, it really seemed like they had weakness. It wasn't just malaise from the severe infection. And sure enough, MRI scans showed lesions highly typical of multiple sclerosis. But they didn't look active. They didn't look new. They didn't take up the contrast dye. It's likely they were there for years, but they didn't have any symptoms. And so likely this person had multiple sclerosis for a long time, but maybe the symptoms were mild or maybe they just didn't see doctors and they kind of got better on their own. And then this severe infection caused the symptoms to come out. Now, this is extremely rare. Usually with a pseudo exacerbation, we see recrudescence of old known symptoms. Anyway, I hope this video was helpful. If you have any stories about exacerbations or pseudo exacerbations or questions, please post in the comments below.